included parts for assembly. Welcome to X-Stage, the world's most portable stage pole. X-Stage ships with all the parts you need to assemble your stage quickly and easily. There is a checklist in the instructions which are in the main case. You should have the following parts. Stage frame. Six stage plates. A pole. B pole. X joint. Three side skirts or banners. A carry handle and three wheel units for the carry case with screws. Two hex keys. Instruction manual and this DVD. Assembly of main carry case. Open the main frame case and remove the items from inside the frame. Undo the Velcro straps from round the frame and carefully lift the frame out. Find the wheel sets, locate the holes for the screws in the case and fit the three wheels to the metal main frame using the screws supplied. The wheel with the steering goes to the front. Make sure the screws are tight. The main frame carry handle is shipped in with the wheel units. Undo the hex screws and fit the handle to the top of the metal carry case frame. Choosing a good location. The first thing you'll need is a great workout area. Ideally, you want the largest space you can find. The standard format assembly of X stage requires a minimum ceiling height of 3030 mm or 120 inches. This is 3000 mm for the pole height and an extra 30 mm for assembly of the joint. You will need a minimum distance on each side of the pole of 1.8 meters or 6 feet. It is important that you know the exact height of the ceiling before building your stage. Use a ladder and a measuring tape to identify the correct height of your ceiling and write this measurement down. If your dance area has a lower ceiling height than 3030 mm or 120 inches, you have the option to reduce the height of the pole by cutting the B pole. Cutting the B pole tube. If your ceiling or workout area is lower than the standard format height of 3030 mm or 120 inches, you will need to reduce the length of the B pole. This is the main tube without the bearing unit. To reduce the total height, a piece will have to be cut from the top of this tube. Subtract the height of your ceiling from the overall pole height of 3000 mm or 118 inches. Now add 30 mm or 1 and a quarter inch to the difference. This is the length you need to cut off the top of the B pole. Now that you have the correct length, you can cut the tube. To do this, you will need to remove the top cap, which covers the end of the B-pole tube. Undo the screw in the center of the top cap and pull it off. Now from the top end of the B-pole, measure the length to be cut and mark it on the pole with a wax crayon or tape. Cutting the tube should be done by someone experienced, so we strongly suggest you take it to your local engineering or do-it-yourself firm who will be able to help. If you are experienced and feel capable and confident you can cut the tube, this can be done with a good high quality hacksaw. Make sure the tube is secure before cutting and ensure it is not damaged by how you secure it. No responsibility can be accepted for damage done during the process of cutting the tube. Once the tube is cut to the required length, refit the top cap and firmly tighten the screw. Frame assembly. The main frame unit is made up of six moving subframes which fan out to form a star structure. With the main frame positioned where you want to dance, locate the center subframe number one. This subframe is the one screwed to the base plate. It is the center of the frames and you will be able to see the bolts holding the subframe to the base plate. It cannot move. 
Having located subframe number one, expand the other subframes either side until they are evenly spaced. The frames open both clockwise and counterclockwise. Take a stage floor plate and examine it. You will notice that underneath it has two sprung catches and next to those catches are small holes to receive the locating pins which are installed at the ends of the subframes. Try activating the sprung catches to see how they operate. When released, the catch pin sticks out of the edge of the floor plate. When relocked, the pin is retracted. The floor plates are positioned over each triangular section of the main frame. To fit a floor plate, carefully position it with the pointed end under the upper center plate. Now carefully lowering the floor plate into place, locate the subframe pins at the end of the subframe and align them with the corresponding holes in the end of the floor plate. When firmly in position, release the two sprung catches underneath the floor plate to lock it in place. Continue around the stage fitting the floor panels until all the floor plates are locked in place. You have now built the main frame. A pole. The A pole has a large bearing unit. Great care should be taken of this unit and it should be protected from being dropped or banged. It is important at this stage to understand the A pole operation as that will help when assembling and dismantling the pole. The A pole bearing unit has two sections an upper angled section with three hex screws and a lower flat section which has the bearing and locking screws. The angled upper section supports the pole tube and holds it in place with the three screws. If these screws are undone, the pole tube can be removed from the bearing housing. These screws can also be used to adjust the pole position in the stage assembly. The position of the bearing unit is fixed during production, so these three screws do not need to be touched. The lower flat section is the part that is inserted into the stage centre and which supports the pole. This unit has two hex screws, a small inverted cutout on the bottom edge and an indent hole opposite the locking slot. The two hex screws in this lower main bearing unit operate the static and spinning functions of the stage. When these screws are tight, screwed in, the stage pole is locked. When they are loose, the pole can spin. These two locking screws must be screwed in so the pole is in static mode to insert the pole and remove it. This will be the fundamental reason why the pole cannot be removed from the main stage frame. When the screws are undone, they will catch inside the main frame center unit, and so when you try to remove the pole and bearing unit, it will stay in place. Always put the pole into static mode. Hex screws screwed in tight when removing the pole unit. Whilst the pole is out of the stage frame, try the operation of the spinning and static mechanism so you can familiarize yourself with how it works. This will help later if you have problems removing the pole. Loosen the two hex screws and spin the bearing unit. Now tighten the screws and you will see the bearing unit will not spin. Now it is time to insert the pole unit. You will see at the outside bottom edge of the main frame bearing holder that there is a pin that protrudes inwards. This pin is where the locking cutout locates. Carefully insert the A-pole bearing unit into the main frame holder so the locking cutout slides over the pin. The pole bearing unit will slide down and fit flush with the holder when it is correctly located. While inserting the pole, you will need to keep it upright as the bottom of the pole needs to be inserted into the lower bearing. It may be necessary to move the pole gently from side to side until the bottom of the pole locates into the lower bearing. Once you are satisfied that the pole unit is in place, you can now tighten the locating screw on the side of the stage frame center unit holder. Tighten this firmly, but do not over tighten. Attaching the B pole using the X joint. Ensure the two main hex screws on the X joint are undone. Using your hex key, undo the screws by turning them counterclockwise. This contracts the joint and makes it easier to install or remove. With the X joint contracted, position it so that the main hex screw is in line with the hole in the tube. 
lower the X-joint into the tube and to the locating pins on the sides of the X-joint, engage in the slots at the end of the tube. Now raise the B-pole over the X-joint and lower it into position. Once again, make sure the hole in the tube lines up with the main hex screw and ensure that the locating pins on the sides of the X-joint engage with the slots in the B-pole. Once the poles are in place, we can expand the X-joint to lock them together. First, ensure that there is no gap between the two poles. Now turn each screw clockwise, alternating until each screw is lightly tightened, but not fully tight. Then, tighten each screw until they are both locked in place. Your poles are now locked together and ready for use. Floor Level Screw Adjusters At the end of every subframe is a screw adjuster. Use these to stabilise the stage to stop it wobbling. Screw these clockwise to extend, counterclockwise to retract. The main stage assembly is now complete. Attaching Side Skirts Once the basic assembly of the stage is completed, the side skirts can be added. These are magnetic and are attached to the edge of the stage. Take care not to attach them too high or you will catch them when you dance. Additional stabilisation X stage has some unique features which can assist with stabilisation. The X stage is very stable in its basic assembled format and can be used in this format for most standard spins and moves. However, if the X stage is being used for more aggressive moves or by heavier persons, the inbuilt stabilising legs and or additional weight may be required. It is the user's responsibility to check if the stage is stable and needs more weight or stabilisation. Stabilising legs at the bottom of each X stage, there are extendable stabilising legs. To extend, slightly lift the stage subframe to take the pressure off the leg, pull outwards on the round levelling screw knob until the press stud pops into the locating hole in the side of the subframe lower tube. Extend three or six legs as required. Always extend both opposite legs. Extend the screw adjusters until there is pressure on all the stabilising legs. This pressure should be the maximum possible. To retract the legs, push the sprung stud inwards and push on the end of the leg until it is back inside the subframe. Retract the screw adjusters. Additional weight. X stage is equipped with weight posts. These weight posts are on every subframe and weight plates can be added at the user's discretion. The weight posts accept 25mm or 1 inch weight plates. Ensure that the weight plates are spread evenly to ensure the stage is balanced. Weight can be added to three or six of the subframes as required. Weight plates can be purchased from fitness stores or on the internet. Static or spinning To convert the X stage from static to spinning, undo the two hex screws located on the main frame bearing holder. To access the hex screws, insert the hex key through the two holes in the centre unit. The hex screws only need to be slightly loosened. To return it to static, re-tighten the hex screws. Do not undo the three pole retaining screws on the upper section. These are only for retaining the pole tube in the bearing assembly. Remember, the static and spinning screws must be tight to remove the pole unit. Disassembly. To disassemble the stage, carry out the assembly instructions in reverse. If the pole seems to be jammed in the stage frame centre unit holder, ensure your pole is set to static mode with the hex screws screwed in. When removing the stage floor plates, the sprung catches should be undone first. The catch activation pins should be pulled inwards whilst at the same time pushing them towards the centre of the stage. As they slide inwards, they will then rotate backwards and lock into place making it easy to remove each floor panel.